Okay, hey everyone. I really just wanted to provide this very brief overview um, of your first writing project for this course, which is the Sustainability Autobiography Essay, so that you understand what you're writing and why you need to write it. Okay, so let's begin. The first thing that I want to begin with is the understanding that this word sustainability, there's no one common definition. If you're in the field of environmental science, the definition for sustainability might look like the quality of not being harmful to the environment or depleting natural resources and thereby supporting long-term ecological balance. And so that's a common definition that we hear oftentimes. But if you're in business, a sustainable business model might look like encouraging businesses to frame decisions in terms of environmental, social, and human impact for the long term, rather than focusing on short term profits. So given the lectures that we've had last week and the week before, you should be familiar with the word environmental, social, and human impact by now. So if we're thinking about environmental or ecology, we're thinking about the natural world, the natural environment, or ecological systems. If we're thinking about social, we're thinking about people belonging to a community, social rights, or even social justice. If we're thinking about human impact, that's relating to the, the um, worldview of sustainability. So we're thinking about how each of our decisions impacts someone else or someone else's culture. And so a sustainable business model focuses on those aspects rather than on profits, which is what you would normally think about when you're thinking about business. If you're in the field of health or biology or anything related to the medical profession, um, a sustainable model for public health might look like the capacity to maintain offering services or healthcare services at a level that will provide ongoing prevention and treatment for a healthcare problem after termination of major financial, managerial, and technical assistance. So a sustainable public health care model looks like how do we care for the people who do not have health insurance or health care or do not have the finances to, um, to buy or to access a particular doctor. If you're in agriculture, sustainable agriculture um, a definition is farming in ways which meet society's present food needs without compromising the ability for current or future generations to meet their needs. So some of you all might have heard of deforestation in which um, entire forests are being cleared in order to produce more food um, or the Amazon fires that are burning. Um, some of you might have even gone vegan because you believe that, you know, how you eat food or how you get food should not harm another species. So sustainable agriculture, again, is about how do you get the food that you need without harming um, another entity or without making it so that it's compromising the, the ability for future generations to get their needs. Here in this English 110 course, I want us to kind of like streamline our definition and think about it as, I think about sustainability as the maintenance and the regeneration of Earth's resources to conserve a harmonious balance. So a lot of times we think about sustaining, meaning maintenance, maintaining, but I want us to think about it also meaning giving back to the Earth, caring back or caring for the Earth and caring for others. So an one example of regenerating might be um, some of you might live in homes where there are solar panels, right? So instead of using oil or coal for electricity, you're actually just using sunlight and not depleting the, the Earth's natural resources. So you're regenerating electricity in that way. Some of you um, might compost instead of throwing out food. You may actually, um, instead of putting food in the trash, you may um, return it back to the, the earth soil so that you're not wasting anything because in nature nature never really wastes anything so these are some of the definitions that we can begin with now that we know what sustainability is I want us to think about what is a sustainability sponsor meaning who taught us to understand and care about the world or care about the earth in which we live or to show up in a particular way now we're going to use this definition that comes from Deborah Brandt, who is a professor, and she 
really her definition refers to um, that of a literacy sponsor, but we're going to relate it to a sustainability sponsor because that's what our paper is going to be about. And she says that a sustainability sponsor is, age, is any agent, local or distant, who enable, support, teach, model, as well as recruit, regulate, suppress, or withhold literacy, and you gain advantage by it in some way. So I really wanted to bold and highlight some terms and phrases that I want you to focus in on. The number one phrase is, you know, um, uh, that most students kind of like go towards is that a person who teaches you about literacy is someone who supports or teaches or models. But really, she's offering us another definition, which is that a sponsor or who teaches you about literacy can be someone who regulates, suppresses, or withholds that literacy. Meaning that because you feel that you don't have access to it, you actually are more curious about it and you decide to go into that field or learn more about it. So for instance, let's say that you know of someone who may have, um, who may have had an illness and because you grew up and that illness affected you or the, your relationship to that person and their illness affected you, you decided that you wanted to go to college and major in a field that helps you to understand more about that, that illness. So again, everything that you learn about literacy or everything that you know about literacy isn't as simple and cut and dry as this person taught me how to read and write. It could be, or I want us to think about literacy as being that someone or some institution or experience taught you how to be critical and to engage the world in a very analytical way or perspective. So then that leads us to what your writing prompt is for your first writing project. So it says a sustainability sponsor is an agent, model, person, or institution that you often think back to as a way of understanding why you feel a particular way about the environment or creating harmony in the world. In some ways, this person or experience has influenced you by giving you information that allows you to form an opinion or perspective. So knowing this, you are then going to take this definition and you're going to answer the question within your essay about what sustainability means to you, how you practice sustainability, and what experiences sponsored this perspective. So for this essay, you're going to draft a three to five page autobiographical essay. And I'm highlighting and bolding autobiographical essay because that means you're narrating your experience of sustainability and you're going to answer where when and how you develop your current ideas and understandings about sustainability and you're going to reference at least three aspects of personal sustainability so that includes the emotional intellectual physical social and philosophical aspects of personal sustainability and you also are required to cite or reference at least three sources within the context of your paper. And one source must be a definition of sustainability that resonates with you. Because we all know that there, or as I've covered, there are multiple definitions for sustainability. So you're going to define it for yourself. So how can you get started? You may or may not have already engaged in the brainstorming process. You may have done it last week. You may be doing it this week. But you're going to answer, what does sustainability mean to me? And again, we're going to begin from the concept of what does it mean to be literate? To be literate, it doesn't mean to just be able to read and write. It means to be able to really engage the world, critique the world, question the world. So what things are you questioning? In other words, what things do you care about? What things do you truly feel passionate about? And you're going to come up with a list of those things if you haven't done so already. And then you're going to begin to think about, like, why do I care about those things? And you're going to form a narrative arc or a story about where you learn to value these perspectives about the world. Now, there are a couple things that, are, that you need to do um, before you can begin really writing your paper. The first thing is you need to have an introduction. So you may begin drafting in the body of the paper, but every paper has an introduction and a conclusion. So let's begin with the introduction. The one number one thing I want you to remember is I want you to avoid opening with platitudes or cliches. Or, and platitudes are any vague statements that we know that they're so commonplace that we know of them to be, or we think of them to be boring or uninteresting. One example is that 
many students start their paper off by saying without my third grade teacher or my eighth grade teacher, I would not be the person I am today. The truth is without any experience, without even the experience you had yesterday, you wouldn't be the person you are today. So let's not begin with something as trite or um, cliche as that. Another experience or another example is that students say, as one goes to school, he or she learns more and more about the world. That is definitely true. So we already know that. So let's begin with something a little bit more specific. Another example that I see that students always begin their paper with is that they say dictionary.com defines such and such as blank, 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 blank. I don't want you all to begin with any dictionary.com definitions. Number one, it's not a legitimate source. And number two, I want you all to become come up with a thematic focus. So your introduction should have a topic that you're focusing on. So begin with the definitive statement and begin with an engaging way that is related to sustainability. The other thing I want you to do is avoid repeating the start of each sentence in the same way. So you can try combining sentences. So if we take a look at this example, it says, I am not a good reader. I am not a good writer. I am not good in English. Maybe a way you can kind of like streamline that sentence of saying I'm not a good reader or writer. So I would say I'm not the best in English so that you're not repeating the same thing over and over. The other thing that I want to point out is that and this is a really important one. You must have a descriptive title and a descriptive title is not the title of the assignment. So the title of your paper should not be the sustainability autobiography essay. Um, you need to come up with something that is more descriptive and more specific. So if I was to give you a paper and I told you to read something or if I was to give you something, I told you to read it and it didn't have a title. The first thing you would say to me is, what is this about? Right. And so even most of the articles that you read online, they have a title. So you should not not have a title in your essay or on your essay. So it's a way for you to think about how would you summarize or sum up what your essay is about. And then I want you to make sure you mention three aspects of personal sustainability that you will be referencing throughout the body of your paper. Let's take a look at this example. So this example shows um, uh, a really good um, idea of how you can begin an introduction. So for instance, um, she gives it a descriptive title. It's about hurricanes, empathy, and sustainability. That's what she decided to reference. And so she begins by saying, admittedly, it might be strange to credit a hurricane with forming your morals and values about the environment. This is a, a sentence that makes me want to read more and, and learn more about what she's saying. But then she also says, it made me break free from my small, self-absorbed and childish world because I was not the only one affected by Hurricane Katrina since it became a nationwide crisis. And then at the end, her last sentence in her introduction says, the experience of having to live through and deal with the aftermath of the devastation of Hurricane Katrina deeply affected my sense of emotional, philosophical and social sustainability. That last sentence is actually um, an example of a thesis statement, which we'll get get into next um, or further into the semester. But we get a sense from her introduction about the things her paper will be about. It has a thematic focus and it doesn't begin with a platitude. And then her thesis statement tells us exactly what she's going to be talking about. She's going to be talking about how um, living and dealing with the after or living through and dealing with the aftermath of the devastation of Hurricane Katrina affected her emotional, philosophical, and social sustainability sense, which is actually um, includes the three um, aspects of personal sustainability that she has to answer in detail in her essay.